Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. And uh, hey, we're continuing the story of David's life. Uh, we've taken a break for a little while. But let me ask you this question. Have you ever been rebuked or corrected by someone and were grateful? I mean, all of us need people in our lives who are going to tell us the truth, especially when we don't want to hear it. Now, Proverbs says a lot about receiving a rebuke. Proverbs 9, 8 says, Rebuke a wise man and he will love you. Uh, 1531, the ear that listens to life-giving reproof will dwell among the wise. Or 1710, a rebuke goes deeper into a man of understanding than a hundred blows into a fool. Uh, people who are wise receive rebukes. None of us like them, but those who are wise receive them. So, lots happened in David's life. We're going to pick back up. We're in 2 Samuel 19. Uh, you know, there was a rebellion by Absalom. You've heard about that last few days. Uh, Absalom kicked him out of Jerusalem, chased him out of Jerusalem, he rallied the people, chased David. They had a war. And, um, and of course, Absalom was killed. And the story picks up where uh, David gets the news that Absalom is killed. And uh, David grieves. Now, this is really awkward because Absalom's trying to kill David. David's forces are fighting against Absalom's. And Absalom loses, David wins, and David grieves because of the death of his son. And that is not good. Now, Joab, who is David's general and cousin, and really generally not a nice guy, uh, he rebukes David. He rebukes the king. He comes in, he picks up verse 5. It says, And Joab came into the house to the king and said, You have today... Covered with shame the faces of all your servants who, who have this day saved your life and the lives of your sons and daughters and the lives of your wives and concubines. Because you love those who hate you and you hate those who love you. For you have made it clear today that commanders and servants are nothing to you. For today I know that if Absalom were alive and all of us were dead, then you would be pleased. Now therefore arise, go out and speak kindly to your servants for I swear by the Lord, if you do not go, not a man will stay with you this night, and this will be worse for you than all the evil that has come upon you from your youth until now. And then the king arose and took his seat in the gate, and the people were all told, Behold, the king is sitting in the gate, and all the people came before David. Now, this, this is an amazing story because of David's conflicted nature. He loves his son. Uh, but he had to fight against his son. His son died in the battle because Absalom was a selfish brat, and we all know that. But, um, but God chose David. And David is upset by Absalom's death. And Joab's like, hey, man, you have to celebrate the victory that your people fought for you, or else you're going to lose all the people. And it's going to be really bad for you. It's going to be really bad for Israel. It's going to be bad for all of us. So stop crying and get out there and celebrate with your people. Now remember, David's the king. He doesn't have to do anything he doesn't want to do. But he listens to the words of uh, counsel that were wise, and he realizes the truth in them, and he responds well and goes and follows suit. So my question is simply this. Is your heart open to receive a godly rebuke? Are you open to correction from people in your life that love you and that you trust and that are trying to speak truth into you? Uh, because if not, then listen to the words of Proverbs again. Rebuke a wise man and he will love you. The ear that listens to life-giving reproof will dwell among the wise. And a rebuke goes deeper into a man of understanding than a hundred blows into a fool. I don't know about you, but I want to be the wise man. I want to receive the rebuke. So I hope that helps you, maybe even rebukes you, and I hope you have a blessed day.